أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له إوجا أيما لينذر بأسا شديدا من لدنك ورب ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يأملون السؤالهات أن لهم أجرا حسنا والصلاة والسلام على رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the gift of life uh, for if it were not that we are still alive I wouldn't be surfacing on this program so that we can be able to have some sharing with you uh, in this al hidayah program uh, may Allah's peace and blessings be descended upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, for he endeavored uh, so much uh, to see to it that we have uh, generations and generations of Muslims and it is something that should be commendable and it is incumbent upon us to always send salutations uh, to the Prophet and those uh, he lived with uh, all the time throughout the struggle to see to it that uh, we have the Islam that we are enjoying this uh, this generation. Uh, I want to welcome you uh, in this program, the Akhidaya Show, the Monday edition. And this Monday edition, we are always looking at uh, our Quran and science. And we have been able to look at a number of things ever since we started uh, uh, this series. Uh, this, this evening, we will be also continuing uh, with yet uh, something else, which I will be introducing to you uh, later on. Uh, I say, uh, you know, the 19th, 18th day of Rajab, uh, 1445, a date that is coinciding with 29th uh, January, uh, 2024. And we are here to share with you uh, in this evening program. In the studio, I have uh, my usual brother who is always uh, on this program to share with us uh, the insights and, you know, the thoughts and facts regarding uh, Islam and science. And is none other than our brother Sekhan Hamza uh, is in the studio. Allow me to invite him uh, to greet you and we will be taking uh, the program right away after his salutation. Second, you are most welcome. Now, our viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the gift of life. As we may be aware, within the Sharia, we look at life as something very important. Be it that a person is of good character or of bad character, the aspect of life is always a chance for you to improve. If you have good character, today you are earning Jannah X, tomorrow you can earn a better form of the Jannah, just because of one day. And in case you are a person of bad character, you have a chance to repent and become a better person. So whenever you wake up and you are alive and well, it is a very big opportunity for you. And you need to appreciate and say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Now, uh, Barakallahu Fikum, uh, with that kind of intro, uh, this evening uh, we are going to look at uh, uh, the scientific miracles of Allah's creation and we are starting with an aspect uh, to do with childbirth. Uh, all of us who are viewing uh, this program and those that shall view maybe online later on, uh, if you are alive you just know that uh, you have been born at any point uh, in time. So as we know uh, Allah has created mankind uh, in various formats. Uh, we know how Adam was uh, got into being. Uh, he were Allah used his hand to create him from uh, clay. And uh, we have another kind of creation where we had Hawa when he was extracted from the rib uh, of Adam. Uh, so meaning, uh, if you want to put it in context, maybe he had a father and had no mother. Then it came to uh, Jesus, uh, Prophet Isa, where he had a mother uh, and he had no uh, father. 
but the rest of the you know the the generations that we have had it should be uh, you know female and male that come together and they have uh, a child being born so uh, this is the kind of process Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made uh, has you know put in, in, in place to perpetuate uh, his creation uh, called uh, a human being so what we are going to look at is the aspect of uh, childbirth the kind of miracle Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put uh, in that kind of aspect so our uh, brother uh, Sekarima mm -hmm. um, when we talk about miracles, uh, it is something that uh, should be un unusual. Mm -hmm. And uh, from what we, we see in the perspective of, of Islam, not everybody can perform miracles. Maybe you can start mm -hmm. up from there. Mm -hmm. And uh, as opposed to what we hear, other faiths are uh, saying that these people are performing miracles mm -hmm. and the like. You can have uh, some kind of shedding light mm. uh, in the perspective of Islam. What is a miracle? Now, a miracle within the understanding of, uh, of the Islamic system is uh, uh, an event that is beyond what is normally expected. Now, you realize that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has created the world, and He has made some general rules mm. in the way things happen. So anything that differs from the general rule mm. is therefore classified as a miracle. We however limit miracles within the Sharia to only people that have Iman, people that have faith. Mm. Because only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants one the power to perform what is extraordinary. For example, mm. Isa ibn Maryam could be able to create a bird from clay. Mm. Then he blew into it and it became a real bird. It flew away and went. Mm. So that one's an extraordinary event. It's not done by any other person. But all that is be eaten in la. Mm. Meaning the, the person must be a person that has Iman and Allah has only extended an aspect of his power to this individual to perform a, a, a limited action. And you can see that Nabi uh, uh, Isa uh, uh, salam, did not keep on doing that all his life. It was a mm. demonstration of uh, what Allah had given him and that was all. Nabi Musa also did things that were out of ordinary. Mm. He has a stick, he drops the stick, the stick becomes a snake. And mm. it's not just a, a, for, a forgery snake, a real snake that is even able to eat things and perform. Mm. So anything that falls outside the range of what is uh, regarded as a common occurrence is uh, what we call a miracle. And uh, like we have said, for us in the Sharia, we limit it only to people that have Iman, people that are Muslim and they are believers <coughs> in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So maybe uh, just uh, to, uh, to, to dig further, how can I uh, differentiate Mm -hmm. and make a difference, a dressing line between uh, a miracle and what I see the magician is doing. The magician is performing. Mm -hmm. The first uh, differentiation is the magician is not regarded as a person of Iman. Mm -hmm. So whatever he may do, we don't regard it as a miracle. Mm -hmm. But how does the magician actually present what he's doing and it appears to be a miracle? Because mm -hmm. remember, miracles can only be permitted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because he's the one that creates all the rules that govern the things that we mm. see. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was narrating to us the story of Musa, mm. he said, Saharu nas. Mm. They bewitched the eyes of the people. Mm. So what happens with this magician? He does not perform what you are seeing as a miracle. Mm. He instead changes your eyes. He changes what the eyes are able to see. You know very well that the eyes finally interpret a signal and you get meaning out of it. Meaning what your eyes are seeing, the reality is actually determined from what your brain finally concludes mm. with. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given those genes and others the capacity to distort what you are seeing. Mm. So meaning this wizard will simply change what your sight is able to see. A small piece of wood becomes a very large log. Mm. A small string 
becomes a snake. <laughs> to your eyes, but it remains a small string. And somebody is taking in, uh, you know, uh, uh, either is, 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 is eating a razor brain. Uh -huh. So like... for you, you are seeing razor brain. <laughs> well, the man is simply eating. Is he even here? Yeah, wow, anything that can be eaten. So the mm. principle for magicians is change perception. Change what the eye is able to see. Mm. And then the seer will be able to <clears throat> think that it is actually a miracle. There is uh, uh, one brother of ours that tends to perform this uh, Islamic uh, Islamic exorcism of reading for the jinns and they leave the person. He one time went to a home, he found people quaking, they were showing him that big snake. Uh, mm. But when for him when he arrived, he just saw a small string in the, in the middle of the compound. But people were all shaking in the house. So then what they were seeing is some big snake moving around, ready to bite whoever passes. But for him, he was only seeing a string. So he just came and picked it and uh, burnt it to, in order to essentially give them confidence that the snake <laughs> has gone away. But ultimately, for them, mm. they were seeing a totally different thing from what he was seeing. Because yeah. he was not under the influence of the magicians. Okay. So okay. it's important to segregate between the two. Yeah, uh, Barakallah of I think with that kind of uh, intro, uh, mm. we are able to differentiate in the Islamic perspective, uh, what a miracle is and uh, what uh, uh, people are saying that uh, mm -hmm. uh, ABCD is performing miracles. Mm -hmm. So as from the Islamic perspective, no one right now uh, is uh, has the capacity to perform miracles. I think uh, there is what we call uh, in Islam uh, the miracles and the uh, those are particular to the prophets and mm -hmm. the others that are, that are done to the righteous people mm -hmm. and it, they are not regarded as miracles. What are they regarded as? It is essentially they are miracles. Anything that is out of ordinary is regarded as a miracle. Either it's done by a prophet or it's done by a, a righteous person. Mm. The principle is this person must be a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's mm. when they, they have the capacity for Allah to extend some power to them to do things and they don't do them and boast around saying they have done them because they also know very well that this is merely a mercy from Allah so they tend to indicate very clearly that this is all the power of Allah <coughs> one what so uh, looking at uh, childbirth uh, what is the miracle regarding uh, childbirth now so we shall look at the issue of uh, a child being born starting right away from the conception because mm -hmm. the journey starts from there. Then the, the, the child grows and finally becomes a fully grown baby. Then finally the child exits. And there are verses on the Quran that talks of some of these uh, very unique events. Mm -hmm. So in Surah to Mu'minun, Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala talks a bit in a very summarized form about this issue of how human beings are created. Mm, the kind of stages that they undergo. So he begins by reminding us that ultimately we all came from Adam and Adam was not born by a human being. So he says, That verily we created man out of an extract of clay. Mm -hmm. So that was the very first form of creation for the human being out of clay. And we should also understand that although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts from something in order to create uh, whatever he has to create, it is not that the clay was compulsory to be there for Allah to create the human being. No. Mm -hmm. Allah is simply uh, making the, the creation <coughs> understandable to us. Because imagine if Allah had just said, let there be a human being, and sh there's a human being there. There's a way it, it may not uh, augur very well with our understanding. So mm -hmm. he puts up a simple suburb like having clay and molding it into the form of Adam. Then he orders Adam to be alive and he becomes alive. But we should be aware that it is not the clay that is creating this human being. This is just a simple uh, process that Allah has decided to follow, but he can use anything. Because we know very well that the angels were, for example, created out of light, and the genes are created out of fire. But all those are essentially starting points that Allah can decide to either have or not have. His creation is not dependent on the existence of some of his other creation. Then... After that initial phase, Allah now talks of how 
we are created. Thumma ja'alnahu nutfatan fi qarari makinu. So from that point onwards, the people that are born normally, including me and you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he starts by creating us as a nutfa, some kind of uh, clot in a safe lodging. Now he calls it safe lodging, meaning the uterus. Mm. So that uterus there is a, a very well protected area, both physically, because it has many layers of the body that protect it, and also in terms of other factors, even uh, diseases, uh, chemicals within the body, you'll find that the last one of Allah has protected the uterus and what it contains from all the dangers that we see coming out of. Uh, so here, we in, the, in our picture here, we, we have an illustration that shows us, unfortunately it's not very clear uh, for the viewer, but uh, visually you can see that we start with that uh, <coughs> kind of, of drop. Uh -huh, then it, uh, once it receives the fertilization, it, go, it begins to multiply and the cells grow, as you can see in the picture. So Allah SWT has told us, Thumma ja'alnahu nutofatan fi karari makind. So the nutfa is that very first uh, small single piece there that we see. Then he says, Thumma khalaqona nutofatan alaka fakhalaqona alaka mudoga fakhalaqona mudoga idhama. Fakasawna ala idhama lahman thumma ansha'nahu khalqan akhar fatabarakallahu ahsanul khalikin. So Allah SWT now explains the various forms in which this transformation occurs. And you can see the way the, the pictures keep changing. As the human being grows the shape mm. and appearance keeps mod modifying until you finally get a fully uh, a grown uh, baby as we can see at the age of nine months within our illustration there. But you realize that one very interesting thing about the process in which the children grow uh, or the baby grows within the womb is that the earlier biologists used to think that the baby begins by having flesh, then mm. inside the flesh, grows the, bones. the bones now begin to grow. Now, basic logic would see as if it is weird that the bones would again grow into the flesh. <laughs> but for them, that's what they thought. It was only when uh, the, Quran, uh, the, the, the people studied the Quran and they found this order that, studied, that starts with the dhuama, then kasawna le dhuama lahma. Starts with the bone, then he dresses the bones with the. And the interestingly, flesh. the very first bone that we find being created is that spinal cord, because the spinal cord controls all actions that don't come out of thinking. Because we realize that as human beings, there are things we do after thinking, then there are those that we call reflex. For them, they are mm -hmm. not arising out of thinking. And as you can see from day one, the very first thing that grows and becomes clearly defined is that spinal cord, because it will be responsible for controlling nearly everything that that fetus will have until it grows into a human being. So, that is the issue that we start with. So, that is the, the verse of the Quran, and you can see it has a detailed explanation of the various stages. And here we even have uh, a video that would uh, be more illustrative to our uh, viewer. You see Allah is talking of uh, the three darknesses. In other verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks of a safe place protected by three layers of darkness. <coughs> it is all there. And these videos are available for our viewers to, uh, to focus more uh, on YouTube. But for us, our focus is to bring out the miraculous nature mm. of this activity. So, remember that for conception to occur, mm. we tend to have two things. Number one, we have the egg or the ovum that mm. is with on the side of the woman. Now, for the side of the woman, we only need one. But on the side of the man, Allah has designed it in such a case that you need millions and millions of sperms. Mm. Now, that thing uh, made me think, 
a bit and said now one this side and this side a million to the level that as we shall see later a person that is regarded as having low sperm count or a, a semen that we can declare as having low sperm count is one that has less than 15 million sperms per millimeter. You know what a millimeter <laughs> <laughs> You know what a millimeter is all about. But imagine within that small space of a millimeter, we are expecting 15 million minimum. Anything less we say low sperm count and low sperm count results in limited chances of ever right. performing conception. But imagine 15 million in just one millimeter. And and to, 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 to put it in more perspective, when we talk about a millimeter, mm -hmm. you need 1,000 millimeters at form one to liter. Form a, 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 a millimeter. Now, millimeter in this case, we are talking of a distance, not a... Uh, uh, not in terms of volume. Is it millimeter, milliliter? <laughs> I think it okay, is. Yeah, it's, it's milli, millimeter, then... Millimeter uh, is, is a is horizontal distance. That, yeah. Uh, that is uh, to do with uh, distance. So it, hey, it, milliliter, not milliliter. Uh, okay, milliliter. Yes. Okay, then that good. becomes one thousand to form uh, a, a, a liter. Yes. So you can see a milliliter is a very small drop. Mm. Is it even as big as uh, the, the a tear? It is even I far smaller it, than it, a it, tear. It but be. imagine in that small drop there we need a minimum of 15 million sperms in order to form what is worthy of starting the process of fertilization. Wow. But remember, the situation becomes even more interesting. We only need one out of those 15 million. And it is not one sperm. Only one <laughs> sperm to cause fertilization. Mm. And this ovum, this egg here, is surrounded by a layer which, once that one sperm is able to enter, it immediately transforms and closes so that we don't have any other coming to enter. And that is a very interesting thing. Imagine the redundancy involved. For us in the computer world, we we look at engineering generally. Mm. We look at redundancy as a very important principle, meaning, yes, the bridge may need uh, just uh, two, uh, two, two lines holding it, but we put there four, so that so there's a problem. Mm. Or an aircraft can fly with one engine, but we put two. So the aspect of redundancy always remains as part of what is very important within the engineering. But our last one, Hotala has put a redundancy of 15 million. Minimum, remember, this is the cutoff point, meaning mm. you have far more. And the 15 million is just that one milliliter. But remember, the, we, it's not one milliliter. It is a, a good amount. So you end up having millions and millions, out of which we only want one. And that one will cause fertilization. And that is indeed uh, a miracle from our last one, Hotala. Now, although we see many women are pregnant, moving around, and it brings to us the imagination that actually getting pregnant is some obvious thing. It is not exactly very obvious. Mm. There are indeed very many people that try day and night, and mm. the fertilization refuses. So you who has a chance and you are able to produce children, you should not look at it as some automatic thing. It is a miracle that Allah endorses and approves for each and every one of us. So for the men, in case a person has a low sperm count, that one alone causes a problem with your capacity to produce. But on the side of women, there are even more things that could prevent that mm. event from occurring. For example, you may have just simple imbalances in the hormones within your body. That alone can cause ovulation to be disorganized and you can never have uh, capacity to conceive. So it is one thing that we should understand that this is not as simple as okay, yes, now you are pregnant. No, it involves a lot of chemical processes that our last one Awatala has put in place and they are the ones that uh, determine how finally the person can conceive. You also have other complications like uterine abnormalities, things like fibroids, and it is things that distort the way the uterus is, 
essentially supposed to function. So all those can cause and prohibit a person from uh, <coughs> from uh, achieving that aspect of fertilization. Uh, but second, I think uh, in the interest of time, we shall have to go for a short commercial short break. break. Uh, when we return, we will be continuing uh, right away from the no, yes, Salam TV. Explore, enjoy, and dance to the latest content, beats, and kawazi from Uganda and beyond. Simply go to your Play Store or App Store right now, find Afro Mobile, download it straight to your phone, and get started. Is it TV you want? Simply open the app, click on TV, select the channel you want, and watch live. Are you busy right now? Then check out On Demand or enjoy in your free time. Afro Mobile. The future is now. Uganda, a land busting with culture and creativity, introduces an innovation for our times. Next Wowzy, a fusion of Next Media, Uganda's largest media network, and Wowzy, a leading influencer marketing platform. It's more than just a platform. It's a movement that bridges ambitious brands with vibrant content creators. Download the app today. Connect. Create. Influence. Eno Ye Salam TV Alhamdulillah Salatu Salam wa Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Sallam wa Ali wa Ashabi wa Jma'in wa Bad I want to welcome you dear viewer uh, from that short commercial break uh, when, Before we went for a, a short commercial break we were looking at uh, you know, things to do with uh, how uh, can we have the process of fertilization take place and we're explaining things to do with the many millions that are, you know, uh, the million sperms that need to be contributed in the process of fertilization. And it is only one uh, that is going to fertilize the egg. And once that is done, then the, you know, the ovum has to close and the others are uh, made, uh, you know, they are closed out. And we looked at uh, even things that can inhibit uh, the woman from uh, conceiving things to do with the fibroids and the hormonal imbalance and things like those. So uh, that's when we, we went for a commercial break. I think we can pick up right uh, from there. Shall we? No. So the other problem that could uh, damage or inhibit this uh, process from ongoing is the fallopian tube either damage or blockage blockage so you may find a person they are alive and well but the fallopian tube has some uh, abnormal formation or it is blocked that one alone can prohibit because remember the fertilization does not occur within the uterus it occurs within the fallopian tube then it moves and settles in the uterus so anything mm -hmm. that prevents the sperms from reaching the, the, the tubes, it immediately cancels out the chance of one uh, <coughs> being able to produce. Then there's another condition, the, medic the medical people call it endometriosis. Essentially, all they are saying is the uterus has a special material that is on the walls mm. inside. But in this abnormal situation, it instead grows outside. outside. 
So in the end, it does not. It grows in an area where it cannot perform its function and just causes a lot of pain, and the person is not able to produce. Because remember, remember that that uh, uterine wall also has a lot of contribution to the way uh, the, 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 the the fetus grows. Then some women have uh, their ovaries uh, not working before they achieve even the age of forty. They call it primary ovarian insufficiency, meaning the ovary produces uh, the eggs each month and before we reach the age where we are ex expecting menopause or something like that, the person simply stops producing. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing is cancer tr and its treatment. You can have a cancer that interacts with the way uh, you are producing and it causes, and even the treatment, radiotherapy because it, it has a lot, and chemotherapy. Mm. It, it changes the way the body functions and in the end the person may not produce. And finally you have age. For the women it is not 100% that you will always be in production. We reach a certain age and our last one our Tyler closes. And I think that one now becomes a bit of a challenge to our current generation where some of our women in the name of protecting themselves from men who are oppressive, they spend an extended period of time without starting the process of reproduction. Mm. They think they have to get money, they have to construct some houses, etc., before they get married. Mm. And in the end, they delay this process of starting to produce, yet you have an end point. Mm. So in the end, you are starting at 35, you have just a space of a maximum Maybe of 10, ten at, at most. Uh -huh, 10 years. So, and within those 10 years, since you've started very late, possibly the, the body is even thinking maybe this one has given up on the entire program and it's not working very well. Usually, the, the medical people encourage uh, starting early because the body starts well into your teens to expect mm. to conceive. So, these are all things that can easily cancel out <coughs> that miracle of conception that we are talking about. So for any of us that think it is just something obvious, it is not obvious. The but other uh, but uh, 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 just recently, mm -hmm. a month ago or so, I saw some lady, uh, miraculously, I would say, mm -hmm. <laughs> produced at the age of, I think, 71 or so. Yeah, but it came out of a process that is semi-artificial. Okay. Possibly we can also talk about it. For some women, once you fail to conceive naturally, meaning the normal process of having a man, then the sperms flow in, in a normal way, reach the ovary and you conceive. In case, for example, you have a blockage in your tubes, then we are sure the natural process can't work. But you hmm. have the, the, the eggs, they are there, the ova. Hmm. So what the technology now available provides for is that you can do that fertilization outside. So you manually bring into contact this ovum and the sperm. Mm. Then the, the normal process takes over. One of the sperms fertilizes this uh, ovum, then they also artificially put it into the uterus. So of course, plants. starting from that point onwards, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will determine what goes on there later. Mm. But this miracle that we are talking about, some of us look at it and possibly play around with it. Because you may find a person preventing themselves from producing children with the really weird reasons. One, for example, says they simply don't want to produce. Eh, subhanallah, people are paying money mm -hmm. just to conceive. That uh, 70 whatever old woman produces out of a process which we call uh, uh, IV, is it uh, the, 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 uh, the, 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 the fertilization is done in a test tube, essentially outside. Mm. But that procedure for you to essentially have it done on you, they require, some hospitals will require 27 million. The minimum is around... 16, 17 million. Mm. Now, imagine, for you are having a chance of being able to produce with zero million. <laughs> you simply have your man and tomorrow you are producing. But you are playing around with the miracle that others have to pay up to 
17 million, 27 million. And Just actually, others have spent quite a uh -huh. lot more and they have not And it's refused. Because even that, after that 27 million, they are not saying guaranteed. No, mm -hmm. <laughs> the 27 is to allow them to carry out the process. But they can also attempt that, but still you are not able to. To, to achieve that, uh, that principle of uh, fertilization. So please, as we live our lives, it is important that we appreciate some of these favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put for us. And these are miraculous things. We see them as <coughs> if they are normal. Yes, you are married today, in uh, nine months you have produced. But it is not as obvious as you may imagine. There are so many things that occur in there that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala essentially makes a decision of. So I think uh, to better, uh, you know, appreciate that, uh, uh, you know, in Islam it tells us that uh, uh, you can understand something or appreciate it by its opposite. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you can't appreciate that, uh, you know, having conjugal rates and you move, uh, you know, you have fertilization and you are able to produce after nine months or so, if you cannot be appreciate, able to appreciate that as a nigma from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look at its opposite. opposite. When people are having to, you know, to spend a lot of money and some of them cannot even succeed. They're still unable you to know, succeed. Others are really barren and whatever they try to, to it do simply it. cannot work. Mm -hmm. In a hadith of the Prophet sallam, the Prophet tells us, it is actually one of the many hadiths that talk, of about, uh, talk about the way we grow up in our mother's wombs. Mm -hmm. In this particular one, narrated by Muslim, in the meaning of the hadith, he says, when the semen or that uh, fetus that has uh, been conceived is 42 year, days old, mm -hmm. so they even indicate the number of days. Mm -hmm. So you can see that the sharia is very elaborate. 42 days. Allah sends to it an angel that gives it its form. Meaning initially here, all these things you are talking of, not of far, it is, those things are not shapes of human beings. Mm. They are essentially just uh, some blood. And, but the angel is sent to give that fetus form. Mm. Then the angel goes ahead to give it hearing, to provide the skin, flesh, and bones. Mm, after for, at 42, at 42 days. days. Then the angel goes ahead and asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, male or female? Mm. So meaning the general, the general elements are essentially the same. So the angel now asks Allah, male or female? Then Allah gives an order, male or female and the angel goes ahead to do the final modification. Now a person may think that the angel is the one doing the work but just like the way we see engineers on a building, the engineer is not the one doing all the brick laying but mm. he's essentially the master of the entire uh, construction. The other one is just implementing the orders. Then the angel goes ahead and asks what about the age of death, meaning how long will this person spend on earth? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give the angel a number, 42 years, 10 years, one week. Mm. It is decided at that time. Then the angel goes ahead and asks, risk sustenance, how much? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes ahead and decrees and the angel writes. Once the angel has written, the angel moves away with that material. Mm. And finally, that becomes the definition of your life. So for us as human beings, especially we, the believers in the principles of Islam, it's important to understand that nearly 95% of your entire life is determined on that day when the angel has come. And we do believe that Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed <coughs> upon you, it will come to pass. Because it was already written right. by the angel. And whatever he has not written on, on you, it will never come to pass, even if the entire universe comes together. Look, for example, at this uh, horrendous war we are having in Gaza. 
the people that know what bombs are are saying the number of bombs that have so far been dropped on Gaza. They, 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 they multiply those atomic bombs that we saw in Hiroshima and Nagasaka. Is it 100 times? Oh. In that small area, the volume of bombardment. So by now, we would ex expect, given the population density there, we would expect that we should have maybe like around 100,000 or even 500,000 people that have died just because of the density of the bombing. Actually, it, you would virtually not see any moving place. Exactly. You would think everyone should have died by now. But the figures are still 26,000. Mm. So that's what finally determines what will happen. Even if you bring a bomb and you drop it on a building, the ones that will die and the ones that will live are essentially the decision of the last one what happened. Now, once we are gone beyond this uh, area of... Uh, actually, there's another thing about conception. The issue of uh, twins. Mm. Some people produce two, three children, and there is produce even seven. So how does it occur? Because here in the Buganda culture, once a person produces twins, ah, they blow the thing out of proportion, <laughs> they get a title salongo, and the, the, the person feels very special. Mm. But if you look at the way it occurs, there is no major contribution of this salongo and his corresponding narongo to the process. So what happens? We have two forms in which a person may have may become salongo <laughs> The first one is where we produce twins from the same uh, egg. Yeah. Remember we said that once this fertilization occurs, the egg now begins to divide itself into other cells and it grows until you get these full human beings. Now in some cases, it divides itself into two full mm -hmm. babies and they begin to grow independent. Those are the ones that we call identical. Identical Usually twins. they are even of the same gender and they tend to look very closely the same because they are made out of nearly the same mm. material all across. Now those ones are usually accidental. So mm. when you see a person producing uh, these uh, identical, identical twins. twins, that one is uh, a, a very serious accident. It doesn't have much of genetic connection. Mm. The one that has genetic connection is the one that we call fratan, where the children are essentially different. Mm. So how does it come? Essentially you have two eggs being fertilized at the same time. So meaning uh, the lady will produce two eggs uh -huh. instead of one. So they are two separate eggs at that time mm. and both of them get Fertilize and finally you have these two, these two fetuses essentially growing together. That one has a hereditary element to it, meaning if your father uh, and if your father was a sarong through that kind of process, chances are that you will also have the same thing. For example, for us we have uh, some of our sisters as uh, twins and we have also been able to produce twins. Usually it occurs uh, but uh, uh, from what you're explaining, generations. I think uh, the major contributor to this is uh, the lady uh, producing two uh, ovary instead mm. of one. So meaning, uh, in the process of fertilization, mm. uh, yes. ovulation, yes, yeah. it, it will bring two ovaries instead of one. So meaning, the yeah. lady should be having a lot more contribution than to the to the process. Yeah. I, I think logically you are right. Mm. It is the the lady that will produce two. So meaning, if we are, your father was a, a twin or your father has produced twins, chances are that you will also be able to produce these mm. twins. But like we have said, you have that scenario where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has decreed two eggs have come at the same time and they have both been fertilized, and we have two. Uh, totally independent people they tend to sometimes have even different gender and they are 100 percent different and they just grew together but the ones that are highly accidental are the cases where they look the same they are the same gender everything is the same mm. and those are the ones we call identical twins so all those are miracles that last one our has put in that area of conception so once we have this baby conceived the baby begins to grow within the uterus.
Hmm. Now, one thing that came to my mind was, remember this uterus has a fluid where the baby keeps playing around. Hmm. Now, I asked myself, this baby is in that fluid. So theoretically, it would be able to drown with, inside that fluid because it's essentially like, mm. like being thrown into some chidomola. So why doesn't it actually drown? So I searched around and they said, when that fluid enters into the, the nose of that baby, remember the baby is not actually breathing because it breathes through uh, the, the umbilical cord. But should uh, that fluid enter, maybe due to some uh, reason, the baby has a reflex. Remember we said the very first thing that is created is spinal cord. So spinal mm. cord controls things that come without thinking. Mm. So once that fluid enters into the lungs, the baby has a reflex that makes the, the, the lungs expel the fluid and it goes out. Mm. But remember also that since this baby is not actually relying on the lungs for breathing, even if that fluid remains there, there's no problem. How do you drown? Mm. Essentially, you are relying on those lungs for breathing. So should water go in there? To get clogged and... So, uh -huh, so you end up unable to enter any more oxygen and in the end you drown okay. just like the way a person dies out of hanging essentially it is deprivation of oxygen to the body and you finally have a problem so meaning even if that child is actually living surrounded by that liquid Allah has already designed a special mechanism that the child does not need to think about but it is controlled automatically it expels that fluid and finally the child is able to live throughout those nine months in that fluid without necessarily uh, having anything like drowning. Now the child begins to grow, gets a skin, gets... Now interestingly, I, I, I've read here that even within the first uh, trimester, which is the first three months, the child even does actions like frowning, to frown is to to appear to be angry, something like this. Okay. The child is able to perform those actions that we see. And they are saying the child even uh, sucks, does the normal things that uh, a child is able to do, just within the first uh, uh, period of their growth. Then they begin to develop continuously. The heart begins to pump. And as time goes by, you can even hear in case you use uh, an instrument like what the doctors use to listen to, and you can be able to feel and the heartbeat. The heartbeat. Now, the final stages of this miracle is uh, when the child is coming out. Mm -hmm. The first question I asked myself, how does the child determine that now, let me exit mm, maybe before we, we get there uh, there are things here that mm. you have made mention of no. uh, to do with uh, the air you know lifespan mm. things to do with the risk and the life yes uh, one I, I I would ask a question as a lay person that if say for example um, already my risk is predetermined Already my lifespan is predetermined. And like, so, in a way, can I just sit back and whatever has been prescribed for me, I'll end up getting it anyway because <laughs> uh, it has already been, uh, you know, written uh, for me that I will die uh, maybe after uh, 70 years, even if I go in the road there, all cars will have either to park or whatever, so my cadre until I get 70. Mm. My risk, even if I have to, you know, to, to sleep the whole week at home, it will finally come. How can <laughs> I, uh, you know, um, strike a balance on that? Oh, that one will need to be <laughs> a question for, 
for the visit the Aki, the people, because they, are, they have to discuss the issue of Qadar. But mm. in summary, without going into a lot of uh, discussions, one, no one knows what has been written for them. onto them. So that's why we move out and search. Mm. Because the last one our has written, but you don't know what he has written. If you had a chance of reading, in that case you say, but I read. <laughs> the thing is saying, <laughs> I peeped and... Uh -huh, I was so. able to read, I found that the car will come at age 40, so I, even if I sleep, the thing is already written. But remember, no one knows what is written. Mm. That is one. Then two, when we live our lives, everything we do contributes in terms of rewards from Allah SWT. For mm -hmm. example, let's imagine Ayub, you've moved out of your house, you are going to look for money to feed your family. But Allah SWT has already written that that day you are going to come up with zero. Mm -hmm. In terms of money. But when you move out and put in that effort, all that effort you are putting in is rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you are not the same as the one that has sat and received zero money. And for you no, moved out, no you reward. put in your effort and finally you received zero money. There is a reward process there. So any Muslim therefore should not be sitting back and saying but the cutter is already there. You mm. don't know what it is and you are foregoing for very important rewards that come out of our pursuance. Then the other issue also is the hadith talks of if you relied on Allah like the way the birds do, mm. you would be fed in the same way birds the birds are, are fed. fed. But remember that the birds also move, move out. Remember, remember the hadith is saying this is one of the highest levels of relying on Allah. Mm. He's saying once you reach the level of birds, you'll be fed like the birds. They don't have gardens, etc., but they eat whatever they want to eat. They move, but they still don't stay on the trees where they are sleeping. They move out and go and look for this risk. So it is important to uh, guarantee to everyone that although the cutter is written onto you, since you don't know what it is, move out. Because even the most, the creatures that trust Allah very much, the birds, they still have to do mm. that simple effort and move out. So it is important that that happens. But some of the <coughs> scholars were actually bringing the discussion saying, no, once the thing is written on you, the means will also be written. Mm. So for example, you may claim, ah, let me stay at home after all the risk. But Allah SWT may, for example, bring a fire in your house and it chases you out and you run to the shops, escaping from the fire. And finally, you reach that place where the risk is supposed to find you. There is another story of uh, a man that was uh, we are caught up with the Sulaiman. Mm. So the man, you see, when you're going to die, you tend to see the angels. Because your time is up. There are, there's no need to worry any further. So the angels appear in front of you. Right? They appear in human form. So the man sees the angel. He has never seen him in that palace. So he says, this man is looking at me. Who, who is he? Mm. So the man tells him that man is Malakul Maut, one of the angels of death. The man says, please move me away from here. To the farthest. And they take me to the farthest point. So, Sulaiman so orders, and the man is moved from the Middle East to far off. I think the narration is talk of India. Around India, China, thing. But the moment he reaches that point, the angel is there and he takes his life. So the explanation was, this angel was in Palestine and wondering how this man is going to get to India. Because the cutter of death has a place and a time. Mm. So imagine you are in Palestine, it is two minutes to the death of this man. How will he move to India? Because the, the check says, take him in, at, in India at a certain time. Mm. So we are concluding. Uh, we, we shall have to, to end at that At that point, point and, and they continue next time. Okay, inshallah. inshallah. Next inshallah. time we should be able to finish that part of how the child finally moves out. And we started with the simple question of the time. We know for all that Allah SWT is the one that makes the decision. Yes, nine months have come. 
now let that one exit today let that one come after two hours let this one come after one day all those decisions come from Allah but we shall look at it in more detail we are looking at the miracle in the entire journey of our birth as human beings now barakallahu feekum khair at that point we shall have to end this program i think it has been engaging been educative uh, keep uh, around next week inshallah ta'ala we shall pick up a uh, writer from there and we see the miracle that is uh, in creation especially at childbirth with that we have to say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh eno yes salam tv Adhan.